Welcome on stage, Juan and Athara. They will present you how to combine Angular and IoT for a really, really helpful and meaningful project. Give a round of applause, please. Hi, thanks for coming and thanks in Spain for selling this talk. We are Azara and Juanma. We work on Singular Asturias, um, a FIH the association in which we do projects, give free tours and workshops, and you contacts on social media. And Azara this year is Microsoft MVP. Okay. I will start telling you about our project. Um, when we started to develop Big Immuno Game, we decided to do it in two phases, okay? The version one, that is have a screen of things, and the version two will be Angular of things. Uh, we decided Angular on things because we have read this article by Yuri Seikit. Uh, he has uh, developed a um, library that uh, really is a conversion of Johnny5, that is the most common platform for developing JavaScript of things, he has translated it to Angular. So you can develop uh, simple projects with less and buttons using uh, his library, but us, we needed uh, some uh, sensors. And this library is not prepared yet. So we decided we have time to maybe do a pull request and try to develop this library or not. And we are doing this project during the summer, so we have no time. So we decided another choice. So what we do was another application in which we call the sensors and get the data. We save the data in a MariaD database, and then with Angular, we get the data and show it uh, in the application. So what is in Monogain? Uh, as I told you, we have two versions. The first of them is that box that you can see there. It's a simple answer question game. And it's a um, proof of concept that we have developed for children with immunological problems that when they left the hospital, they go to their home, but they have to be in good conditions and they have to learn a lot, a lot about their immunological system because, because they have to take care. So we developed the game to be more interactive and to be more fun, so they learn easy. And we decided that as we have the game that has speakers and Raspberry Pi, maybe we can uh, put some sensors on it. So we put a um, temperature and humidity sensor and particulates on suspension sensor on the box. So uh, we get the data from these sensors, and with some algorithms, we calculate the risks of having uh, influenza in the room or having an allergic alert in the room. So the parents could, could uh, connect with the Angular application, could see if there is risks or not, and if there is risk, and if there is a risk, what they can they can do to uh, 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 make the conditions of the room be better, be, be good again. So we have a small video. Can you play the video? I don't know if it's going to... No. 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 Not it. Okay. So we have the video, uh, but it's not working, okay? We can see show you later. We have here the, the Muno game. If someone wants to interact with us, we can show you. And what we, what we do is uh, I am going to explain you the steps that we have followed this summer, okay? First of all, we have both the Raspberry Pi. When we bought it, we, we have the 3B version, but now it's the Raspberry 4 version that is really great. If you want to start doing something with it, buy the 4 version. It's really good. And then the next step is to, is to download the Raspberry system. It's the Raspbian that is based on Linux. And we decided to download the stretch version with desktop. There are three options, but for us, this was the better one. We downloaded it on it, and then copy to an SD card. And the SD card is the card that you put in the Raspberry Pi. It's very simple. And once you have the SD card on the Raspberry Pi and you connect it to a, to a, piece, to a screen, then you can update the Raspberry Pi. These are the commands. It's very easy in the cell. You put the commands and you update the Raspberry Pi. The next step 
is that we recommend is to uh, delete the pre-installed node versions because a Raspberry Pi and the Raspbian came with no they pre-installed, but it's a very old version. So we prefer to delete it and then we download it from the, from the net with this command and install it in our Raspberry Pi, the last version, that will facilitate a lot our development. The next step is to make a graph. Okay? It's very important to paint what are you going to use and where. Ha, because, because there are, uh, I, I think that you can see it, that there are two rows of pins that the Raspberry Pi has, and this is where you connect your inputs or outputs to the Raspberry Pi. So it's very important to know where you have connected everyone, because you need a number to tell the Raspberry Pi and then uh, to develop or to program some things on this dispositive. Okay? So uh, at the beginning, we started with a, with a mono game, with a mono game, with a JavaScript part. So we added uh, some LEDs, the one that is indicating if it is active or not, and the red and green for the true and wrong answers, and also one for the quest uh, one question button and the answers button. Okay, these are very simple. We connected it, and then we added the sensors. One of them. As you can see, it's the humidity and temperature sensor and it's connected through the pins. But and the other one, the particles on suspension, is connected via the USB port and also the speakers that are from, uh, by the USB port and by the jack. The next thing is that we, the, we do another application, a very simple one. Okay? It has in, anything that. Uh, the packages on the immunoserver, immunoserver, yes. And also, we have in the, in the roots folder, we, we put three files. One for taking the sensor data, one for connecting with MariaDB, and one for logging. Because uh, we wanted to securize a bit our proof of concept, so we implement uh, GWT authentication. It's very simple. Uh, it has a lot of documentation in, on the internet, and I think that many of you have used it. Uh, if not, the only thing is that um, the, is that you make a post or for the logging, and then you receive in the request uh, in the request body the user and password. I don't know if I can. Okay, the request and password. We compare them, and if they are the, co the incorrect one, we send an error, and if not, we do a token with some with an expiration that we have calculated and send it back. Very simple. The other file was for connecting with MariaDB, that in this case we are only taking the data from the we are taking the data from the database if we perform um, a get or we are posting it. In this uh, code you can see the get that we only connect. We have here the connection data and then with connection get connection we connect. If there is not an error, we, we only perform a simple get, and we get the last 10, uh, 100 data. We do this because the Angular application has to pass, one that shows the risks, the level of the risks of allergy or influenza, and then the parents can see the evolution of the risks, and we show it in a graph. The next, the next file is to get the sensor data, and this is really the angular of things, okay? getting that data from sensors. Uh, the best part of using JavaScript or using angular of things is that you have not the modules, and not, the, and not modules as uh, in other development that we can do help you a lot. In this case, uh, many of the sensors have a module that it uh, gets the, all the actions to connect and to extract the data, so it's very easy to use. We only downloaded the specific um, no, the modules for the, part, for the temperature and humidity sensor and for the particle sensor, and then we started with the code. Okay? As I tell you, it's very simple. We require the two nodules models that we have installed, one in the SDS011 client and then in the temperature human, human sensor, and then we uh, declare a variable sensor. This is for the SDS011 is oh, 11, 11 sensor that it instantiates it with new SDS011 client and the, use, uh, the USB port 
in which you have connected it. This, this is very easy, but it can be very tricky, okay? Because when you connect it in the Raspberry Pi, you don't know the name of the port. So if you want to do something like that, a tip is that you can list all the ports of the Raspberry Pi with nothing uh, connected, then you connect in the port that you want, and then the one that is not in the list is the one that you have selected, okay? And then we declare uh, the sensor DHT type, uh, is 11 because we have both the 11 type. There are a lot of them because you can have ones for temperature, others for humidity, both together, whatever you want. And the pin in which we have connected it, that is 16. And the only thing is getting the data. So for retrieving the data, in the particles, in the suspension particles, we set the reporting mode query. So we, we tell the sensor, OK, start getting data. And then we set an interval, because they get data, they, they get data very fast. And they send you f data uh, uh, several times at second. So it's very difficult to read it and to manage it if you don't set an interval, OK? After setting the interval, we get the data. And uh, before that, we uh, do a call to the temperature and humidity sensor because we need the both data at the same time to, the, to send it to the angular part to do the algorithm with all the exact data at the same moment. We, uh, we receive the data in the, in, in the callback function inside of data. And it's very simple because it gets the PM to P5 is the data for the particles of 2.5 um, 2 micros, that they are viruses or small particles or with this type of, of information. And the uh, PM100 data, the PM10 is the particles that are suspensions that are like um, uh, uh, chemicals. If you live in the near a chemical factory, there will be a lot of chemicals in the air, and you can detect it. And then we save the data, and we return it to the Angular application. The temperature humidity is very simple also. You only get the temperature sensor that you have instantiated, and you, and you tell them, read, read. You, you pass the type, 11 in our case, the GPO ping in which it's connected, 16, and then in the callback, Function, you get the error, the value for temperature, and the value for humidity. The temperature and the humidity are with a lot of decimals. We rounded them. But the good point is that the temperature sensor send, send the data in, grad, in Celsius grades. That for us that are European is very good. I don't know if for the American people. And then we have the immunoserver GS, that is a simple uh, GS for an unknown application. We have performed anything special, okay? And then we have the Angular application. And this is the, the, a very simple application. It's an Angular 8 application. And what we have done with it is to connect and get the data. OK? So first of all, we have uh, developed also the GWT authentication. And this is, uh, this is the other part of the security sensor. It has a service and also an interceptor. Here we display you the interceptor that has anything special also. It intercepts all the calls that are received. And, and if there are not the logging, they perform some actions. If there is a logging, they get back to the logging page. If not the logging, they look at if the user is logged in in which case it, it uh, puts in the headers the information about the viewer. And if not, it sends the, it sends the, the page to the log, log ah, excuse me. It does as logout, and it redirects to the login page, to the home page. And the obtaining API data is very simple. We only connect with an, uh, with an API and then get the data. After that, what we do in, the, in another methods of the service is to calculate the algorithms. For that, we have uh, spent several weeks reading some uh, scientific reports and some scientific articles. And we have uh, read that uh, you have a lot of risks of influenza when the temperature is not very low, but not very high, and the humidity 
is very low. With this data, we perform, we take our data of the sensors and we calculate the algorithm. Also, we have uh, read about the particles in suspension and the PM10 uh, are very um, hard and they are very problematic because for the lungs of people with problems, uh, immunological problems is uh, a very is in our bad news, but also it's very important the small particles because this indicates that there is a virus or maybe there are some uh, bacteria or something in the air in the, in, the, in the room. So we calculated it and then we saw the data. We tried to show them in the three years, but at the end we decided that we only need two graphs showing how it has varied during the time. So we uh, selected the graph GS uh, library that is very useful for me, it's very simple. You only have to, you only have to instantiate one, uh, two canvas. Well, in our case, two canvas because we have two graphs, okay? And then we have some uh, properties in our data. So we tell them where to take the data, which levels are, are there, and other type of, um, of things like border color, or if you want a specific font for your text, or something like that. You speak very fast. <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, something important is that in, in to Raspberry Pi, we run as demo the node server at the Angular application because when start the Raspberry, or auto start Raspberry, it run the automatic application Angular. And now? Um, in our GitHub, we have all the code and all the documentation. And we are going to tell you uh, I always go very fast in the in the talk, so we are going to tell you about some things that we we used to talk when we do talks. Is that not everything goes perfect, and it's very difficult when you develop a pet project and you try to do it correctly. So we have some problems. Okay, uh, some of the problems that that we found is when we developed the game. Okay, with the Raspberry Pi, we decided to use a QR code to read the data. <laughs> but it was a really fantastic idea. We have, the, we have designed all the cards and all the things. And the QR code, it reads the data. Well, it reads the data. Uh, the, first, the, first time, the first time, it doesn't read anything. And we decided to, to know what happens. So we buy another, uh, we, we buy some, some things to connect it properly with a Raspberry B. We buy some external uh, source to give it uh, uh, um, um, amperius, more amperius, but it doesn't work. And we, just, we, we look at it, and when we connected it, it read once time and never again. We started to, to think, OK, we can put a button that it uh, disconnects uh, QR and then it starts and say, no, this is stupid. It's not, it's a proof of concept, and we can do this type of thing. So we put a button. Another thing, it was a movement sensor, sensor that is, well, it was very useful and it, it's really easy. It also has another module and you, have, you can install it and it's really useful. But if you are going to put um, a sensor movement in, in, your, in a box looking for a children, in our idea was if the children is moving, is that he's happy. So it's a good idea. But we, we haven't taken a, a look, and we started doing in our, in our room, and it started uh, sending data of movement, and no one is moving. But if you have a fly, or you have something in the, in the room, or a cart a thing moving, it, it detects it. So it was not a good idea. And uh, also, we have problems with the speakers that we have in the JavaScript, because um, there are a lot of libraries that you can use it. And it's very important that you select uh, and you test everything uh, separately and then together, okay? Because there, there are uh, sem uh, several libraries that work very well with Angular of Things or with JavaScript of Things. But when you mix them, they give error. So for us, this was something that was hard to understand and was very difficult because we were developing this this summer and we have the parts working independently. But when we mix it, it was like, wow. 
and we're starting to maybe to to change the files of the you know, the modules of the libraries and things like that. And it doesn't work. So at the end, we search it for documentation and get more other other options. And we decided that it's better to change the options sometimes. Another with sensor particles. Particle sensor. Yes. yes. And because it connects by USB and no read. And it's because we have other USB, but with data and Raspberry. If has a one yes. USB of data, no read any USB to read data. Yes, this is important. You have a, a key with with data and connected to the USB to the Raspberry Pi. We don't know why, but it doesn't read from sensors because it has another dispositive that is saving data and and she doesn't understand the, that she can perform other actions with other ports. So this was a, also a difficult thing. For us, this is a proof of concept. Uh, we will love to develop it, but it was only to learn more about JavaScript of things because all people are developing IoT, IoT with Python, but JavaScript rocks, and <laughs> we couldn't do it, and Angular rocks. And also, we want you to, we want in that if, if you like this talk, to look at the GitHub, but also to look at Yuri Saket library. That is really interesting because if you want to do some things with LEDs and buttons, it's a good thing to use uh, Yuri 5 or the Yuri's library. And I don't know if you want to, to add anything more. Peter. So <laughs> thanks for coming. We we work at Singular, and it's a company that's all, that is always growing. So if someone wants to apply, well, <laughs> here is the data. And if someone wants to see more near the Immuno game, it's there, uh, no problem <laughs> to, to show you all the, all the cables or something, or if you have questions, um, this type of things. Questions. Thanks. Um, we have some some more time, so I guess I can ask you a uh, few questions. Do you know, like, did you build it, um, every single piece inside of the box? Okay. Or which parts of, of, the, of the box are, like, really made by you and which parts yes. are, like, okay. bought? <laughs> okay, the I, I know you cannot see it, but it is uh, yes. beautiful. <laughs> The Raspberry Pi and the speakers and all the things is, yeah, are, are both, but we have all these cables and all these types of things that we have um, do it, develop. And also, the box is a simple box, okay, that we have bought and we have, well, he has uh, done the, um, the, um, the holes for the things and then we have um, print some, some images and things like that and it's all very manually. Yeah, so all handmade. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. <laughs> cool. <laughs>